Hello friends and welcome to another video. If you are new here, my name is Tina, also known as I'm a wonder to most of the peoples of the internet. I am going to be showing y'all my new studio. For those of you who don't know, I recently moved and so I am in a new apartment and the studio space that you're going to see here is a den technically of this apartment and so yeah it is a little bit smaller than my previous space in my previous one so there is going to be a lot of elements that are going to be the same if you've seen my previous studio tour but there is some adjusted kind of elements because it is a smaller space and I have acquired a couple of new things. So I am going to show y'all a little bit of the kind of moving and decorating process of the studio and then we will do the tour. Also, just as a disclaimer, I want to preface this with you, of course, do not need to have a space like this in order to make art or to jumpstart or have a career in the art or creative industry. I know that sometimes these types of videos can make people feel as though they need something like this in order to achieve a certain level of success. And I just wanna say you definitely don't. And this is definitely years in the making for me to reach this point in my life. Just wanted to put that out there before we really dive in. So anyway, Without further ado, let's go.
I've had these wooden pencil holders for quite a while now and I've always intended to decorate them in some way but it only took me many years later to finally do it and so I decided to first use just a primer gesso base first and then I've been really into checkered patterns lately so I went ahead and created a checkered pattern by mapping it out with a pencil first and then going in with the paint after the fact. I'm using a soft body acrylic paint, which means it has a more fluid consistency, which I personally prefer because I don't really want any texture. And then I'm using a synthetic paintbrush and I was using a palette knife as well to mix the paints. And I'm literally just using like a plastic lid from a takeout container for my palette to use um, to mix the color. I really hated the placement of this thermostat so I got really lucky that this photo frame that I already had enough depth to it so that I could put it right on top and then from there I put the rest of the photo frames around it. Okay, so we're gonna start on this side of the room where my computer is. I don't remember how I filmed this by myself originally. It's so hard with the tripod, but anyway, so bear with me here. So this is a standing desk. It is a crank, so I can adjust the height on it. So if I wanna sit, I can sit. If I wanna stand, I can stand, which is great because previously, when I had my, I used to have three desks, which was a lot. Um, I had my computer at a, an L table that was not adjustable. And so I do remember sometimes wishing that I could stand for certain like admin type tasks like emails or whatever. So it's nice to now have the option to stand when I'm at my computer now. And as you can see, obviously there are certain tech things that are just by default black. And as you might have guessed, I am a big lover of pastels for my home decor. And so I thought that I would try and balance out a lot of the kind of black devices that are on this side of the room with having certain artwork um, in black picture frames. And so you can see here, I have various artwork that I have put into black frames to help sort of tie in the color scheme that's going on here with all these pastels along with all of my kind of black devices. Bringing you in a little closer, I had received this actually quite a while ago just in my P.O. box and it is a portable speaker as well as like a pixel art thing. I have yet to actually set it up. And so that's why I haven't really mentioned it before, but it's super cute. I love that it's pink, obviously. So I will set this up eventually, but I'm very slow and lazy when it comes to adjusting to new tech. I know that this is probably not very difficult to set up, but in any case, it's not a priority, so I'll get to it eventually. And then these are the wooden pencil holders that you would have seen me painting. 
I really love checkered pattern right now. So I am super pleased about how this one turned out. And this is the amazing Grove Made desktop stand. I've been looking and eyeing to get something like this for a while because I knew that my desktop wasn't actually quite as eye level as it should be. And so now that it's elevated a little bit, I'm not looking down. I'm not adjusting my neck to look at the screen. Now I can look at it straight on, which really helps with fixing and getting my posture a little better. And I love that it just gives me way more space and it's more organized. So I'm able to keep my bullet journal in here as well as other little knickknacks and things um, as opposed to having it all cluttered on my desktop here. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank Grove Made for sending me these products. They didn't sponsor me, but they did send these products to me for free. And along with the stand, I got this beautiful mouse pad that I'm actually going to gift to my friend. It has this little slot for pencils, which I love, and it fits a tablet pen, which is great. They make lots of beautiful office accessories like coasters, notebooks, and more. So if you are interested, I will have a 10% off coupon code for you in the description and a link for you to shop the items if you're interested. I would have shown you this in my previous studio tour is this amazing mechanical keyboard. I often get a lot of questions on it when I post about it in my stories on Instagram or when people see it in my YouTube videos and I have it linked in the description if you are interested in it. It makes this really satisfying clicky sound and I am obsessed with it. And then I have my cute little pink mouse that goes very nicely with it. And then moving on to the opposite corner of the room, I have my kind of merch section for the most part. It is a little bit underwhelming right now because one, I haven't fully organized it yet. And two, I don't have a lot of stock right now because I tried to sell a lot of it previous to the move so that I wouldn't have as much stuff to move over. But I do have a few bits and bobs in here that will of course be available when I reopen my shop, whenever that will be. But yeah, I really love these sliding drawers from Ikea. They're gonna be great for when I get more prints in. I also currently have sticker sheets in here as well, which fit really nicely like that. made this shelving unit thing out of foam board and then I bought these little cardboard storage boxes. They're just like corrugated cardboard that you fold up and I find that this is going to be a great thing to have when when I get more merch. And yeah, with this, I really like that it's cardboard because it's really light because foam board is it's like pretty sturdy, but when all the merch is inside, obviously the weight can get pretty heavy. And so this is great for when I have my washi tape, acrylic charms, um, enamel pins. I also have stickers in here as well, which you can see I have packaged here like this. And yeah, I have a few little drawers underneath as well. Not drawers, containers, I guess. Um, again, just to store other kind of smaller stock. And then up top and underneath is the parts that are not quite as organized. So yeah, down here I have this like plastic bin unit that has all these different sections, which is at the moment hosting a bunch of different stickers. I have these Sailor Moon Girl Gang stickers here. And then I have some Hogwarts House stickers there. And then underneath I have some acrylic charms and some hand painted ornaments that I don't really know what to do with. I guess I'll list them up in the shop at some point. I made them quite a while ago when I did like art fairs. It's been a really long time and I don't know what to do with them. So yeah. <laughs> And then, yeah, this is not very efficient in terms of 
grabbing things when I'm actually packing orders, but right now they're hosting um, lots of like Patreon rewards. So in here, I have like leftover Patreon stuff that um, I list up in my shop when there are leftovers after a number of months. On my Patreon page, I have like a postcard and sticker tier that I mail out every month. And then at the very bottom here, it is zines and button supplies and memo pads. Again, not really pretty looking, so we'll just gloss over that. So I've got two of these drawers here. This one hosts a lot of kind of not so exciting stuff like sticky notes, um, business cards. I have washi tape in here. They're very disorganized because again, I am still in the midst of organizing all of my things. And then in this drawer, I have a lot of art supplies. In this top one, I have like my light pad, masonite boards, not very exciting. And then here we've got rulers, cutting boards, tape. Then we move on to the more exciting stuff down here. This drawer is mainly watercolors. Right now I have them just sort of haphazardly in this box, but I would like to get some bins that are just open so that they're easier to grab and see. The bottom, the drawer underneath that is inks and gouache for the most part. And we've got the inks and the gouache poster paint here. I've got lots of acrylic gouache in there and my Holbein paints, Holbein acrylic gouache in here, Turner's as well. Again, would like to get plastic bins for these at some point, but for the time being, at least they're sort of contained. Moving down from there, it is tons and tons of watercolor paper. I am probably set for watercolor paper for a lifetime. It's insane. <laughs> There's so much in here. And then the very last one is more watercolor paper, but also some other miscellaneous ones like this mixed media one. I have a pastel one um, and some printer paper at the bottom there. The most neglected drawer, that's for sure. Moving to on top of this drawer, I have this little stand, which originally was in my bedroom and I would store all of my makeup and skincare items. But now I have moved it into the studio because this unit, this drawer unit used to actually live under one of my desks, but just the way that this room is laid out now, it doesn't really work that way. So might as well utilize this space on top. And so up here I have a bunch of different holders for various art supplies and paintbrushes. This is, I think, technically a plant pot thing from Ikea. This I just recently acquired from, I will have their Instagram handle here. I love it, it's so beautiful. I love the speckled glaze, the little flowers, of course, and the fact that the inside is pink. I don't know if you can see. So cute. This I get a lot of questions about, this little Totoro one. My friend gifted to me for my birthday. I don't know where she got it from, unfortunately, but I love it so much. This is from Amy Ceramics. It's so cute, I love it. And then this Spirited Away one is, I got it when I was in Disney World, actually in the Japan section in Epcot, and I love it. It's so pretty. Under here, more Ghibli stuff because I love Ghibli, of course. This is Gigi from Kiki's Delivery Service. It was gifted to me many years ago. We've got a little Princess Mononoke postcard. This was actually, you can see it's been like cropped, I cropped it. Uh, this was actually a flyer for TIFF, I think, in Toronto 20, in 2013, I guess, uh, when they were showing a bunch of Ghibli films. And so you can see on the back, there's like extra stuff. Um, I couldn't just recycle and throw this away. It's so nice. And then this is a little bit of a secret. I can't show you just yet, 
but for those of you who are familiar with Makeship, you might know that they team up with various creators and make plushes usually. And so I may or may not have made a plush with them. It's going to be launching at the end of this month. So keep an eye out for that. I'm very, very excited about it, but I can't show you just yet. And then down here, these are prints that I am going to be hanging up somewhere later. I just haven't put them up yet. I will eventually, I just, that's why they're just chilling here. This is my trusty second standing adjustable standing desk. And I really, I really like using this one for my actual art filming because it's white. So it's just like a clean blank slate for when I am painting and drawing and filming. And I recently got this plant um, gifted to me from my mom. Thanks, mom. I hope I don't kill it. <laughs> and then I also recently acquired this beautiful set of Blackwing pencils that is in collaboration with Grove Made with this custom kind of holder for them. And it comes with a little sharpener that fits into this little slot. It's really nice. I've heard such amazing things, uh, Blackwing pencils. And so as many of you know, I typically don't use graphite pencils, but I am looking forward to maybe being converted with uh, trying these pencils out. So I did take the opportunity to do a really quick test run of these Blackwing pencils and I will say they are a 2B so they are soft and they are so beautiful. I found it so buttery, so smooth and the eraser on the other end, I love the shape of it and it erased really well. And yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of looking forward to working with them a little bit more. I never would have thought that I'd go back to using graphite pencils, but I really enjoyed the way that it feels. And also the aluminum sharpener that is in this kit is also really, really well made. It's very sturdy and created a really, really sharp point on this pencil. And then this is also a new addition to my space. This is a new, water holder and again love the speckled glazing on this and i love that it has a little paintbrush holder on the top there and yeah this is also a handmade item from sarah b pottery and i'm so excited to have this to paint with up at the top here i have various sets of markers and then on this side i have some gouache jelly gouache some other miscellaneous art supplies that are just kind of shoved up here. This section, of course, are my art books. And I do have a kind of tour video of my art books on my Patreon if you're interested in that. Moving on to this side here, I get a lot of questions about this, these little shelving units. Again, they are made out of foam board and just a hot glue gun. I made them many years ago, so unfortunately, no, I will not be making a tutorial on it, but I swear I just Googled like marker shelving unit foam board or something. So there is plenty of options, I'm sure, on the internet to show you how to make this. But yeah, it really was quite straightforward and I'm very happy of how perfectly they fit in this shelving thing. And yeah, up on the top, I have my fine liners. And then this little section, I have my paint markers. Then I have all of my alcohol markers here. And then when we move down, I'm so sorry how janky this is. I really should have just asked a friend to come over to film this for me, but you know what, we're just, we're just doing, I'm committed. I put a full face of makeup on, makeup on and I need to get this video out tomorrow. So we're just gonna do it like this. Um, <laughs> so yeah, these are mostly unused sketchbooks. Yes, completely unused or like not currently using. There's so many, I know. And then moving over here again, this foam board shelving unit that I made. This one houses my colored pencils. And then this clear unit I got from Muji, I believe, um, just to house 
random stuff like erasers, sharpeners, clips, those kinds of things. And then on the top here, I have these colored inks that unfortunately are just a touch too tall to fit in my drawer unit where I have my other inks, which is a little bit frustrating because I'd rather have them all together, but say lovey. Then moving on down the shelf here, I have my Ohuhu alcohol markers that I use pretty often. And then over here, I have the sketchbooks that I am currently using. So they're a little bit closer in reach. And uh, yeah, there is a lot of them. I always get asked about sketchbook tours and this is the reason why it takes me so long to do them because I work in so many sketchbooks at any given time. And then over here, I am housing sketchbooks that are either finished or I am not using uh, and we'll get to eventually later. I have a lot of sketchbooks, guys. It's kind of insane. And then way in the bottom, it's just more miscellaneous books and zines and things like that. And then at the very bottom here, I have this little box of random decorative items that I use for photographing my work, as well as just, again, sort of a mishmash of things. And then this is a paint palette um, fine liners, and then a box of acrylic paints for the most part, and a couple other random things. And yeah, that is the studio tour. It's definitely still a work in progress. I've only been in this apartment and this studio for about a month. So it's definitely going to evolve as I spend more time here and work in here and figure out what makes the most sense and how I can best navigate the space that I'm in. It is, yeah, it is definitely a little bit of an adjustment just because it is different from what I had previously. So yeah, but I am looking forward to Gotta love Toronto. It is very loud all the time. So yeah, I hope that you enjoyed seeing the studio space thus far and maybe it brought you some inspiration for how you want to decorate or organize your own space. But yeah, so that pretty much concludes everything. Thank you so much to my patrons who are a huge reason why I'm able to do what I do for a living. And I'm so incredibly thankful for that. And thank you for watching and supporting me, whether it be from watching my videos or interacting with any of my content. I really appreciate it. And yeah, I look forward to spending more time in this studio and taking y'all on the journey through studio vlogs and various art videos. So feel free to let me know in the comments what your favorite little decorative element was in this studio. So yeah, that's everything from me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.